Hi, I'm Jess and welcome to session two called Unleashed Presence. We are all empowered by the Holy Spirit to pass the glow on, to pass the good news of Jesus on to those around us. And the disciples did this in the book of Acts. They share the good news of Jesus. They pass it on to other people. They are really active in demonstrating God's power. And this is followed by amazing signs and wonders and healings that we see take place in the early church. Now, the disciples were given power for a purpose. We begin to see healings take place in the book of Acts. And with the Gospel of Luke being about what Jesus began to do and teach, here we see the book of Acts is what Jesus continues to do and teach. It's the Acts of the Apostles, or it could be called the Acts of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. What Jesus did comes alive through the lives of the disciples. His Holy Spirit is poured out to equip them. And we see these miracles happen and people are in awe and wonder at what they are witnessing. In Acts chapter 5, starting at verse 14, it says, Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought those who were ill onto the streets and laid them out on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing those who were ill and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. What amazing words that we read in scripture. We are to pass the glow on and to share it with others. In the book of Acts, we see these amazing healings. But it doesn't just stay with us. This is good news, a new life that can be shared with those around us. Now, I don't know if you remember in school being a part of a relay race. And it was a group, usually about four of you on the track. And you would have to run with this baton. And part of it, you would have to pass it over to the other person. They would have to pick it up and run with it to the finish line. But it wasn't an individual sport. It was a team effort. And for us, the gospel is a bit like this baton. It is something that can be passed to other people, passed to those around us. It doesn't just stop with us. Paul, who we'll spend a bit of time looking at, who wrote a lot of the New Testament, he describes life as a race. At the end of his life, he says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. If we are running this race, we have something to hold on to, and that is the good news of Jesus Christ. But we can pass it on to those around us, and this is the glow that we're going to be talking about, how God lights our world the glow that illuminates everything, the good news of Jesus Christ that is for everyone. Now, I don't know if you've ever received a piece of really good news. And when I receive good news, all I want to do is share it with other people because I want to see their reaction. I want to see how excited they get about hearing this piece of good news. It's all I want to talk about. I want people to bring it up in conversation. I want to bring it up in conversation. And the meaning of gospel is literally good news. And with good news, we want other people to hear it and we want other people to be a part of it because there's joy in good news. There's excitement. There is sharing. Jesus says in the gospel of John that his disciples, that his followers, that us today would do greater works than he did that his gospel would still continue. And these were not empty words. We see the church today is unleashed, fulfilling what Jesus said would happen. And we see if we go through all the way to the end of Acts, we see that it doesn't end with an amen. When we say amen at the end of our prayers, it means I agree, there's a finishing point to it. When someone says amen, we know that prayers have finished. But there's no amen at the end of the book of Acts because these acts have not finished. The church continues today and we carry on. We pass the baton forward. And as young people, we might think, oh, we're the church of the future. 
you know, we'll, we'll grow into it one day. But that's not true. You are not the church of the future. You are the church of today. And there are elements that God is pouring out his Holy Spirit on you. You might feel a sense of bubbling up, a sense of calling that you know what God is calling you to in your life. But you are the church and Jesus can use you powerfully today. And as we looked at in session one, Jesus promises that we will not do this on our own because his promise is his presence and his presence can be with us today. One of the things that we see happen in the book of Acts is healings. And this is a result of Jesus pouring out his Holy Spirit. Healings take place. And in Acts chapter three, we see Peter heal a lame beggar. And this is someone who can't walk. And Peter walks past him and they have this encounter. So in Acts chapter three, verse six, it says this. Then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognised him as the same man who had used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. We see in the book of Acts these amazing signs and wonders. This healing of the lame man. He got up and he walked and he praised God. He jumped for joy. And those around him were amazed. And we might think that, well, this stuff is in the Bible, you know, it's fine for that time. But this stuff happens today. It still happens by the work of the Holy Spirit. And when I pray for people, if I ever pray for someone who asks, who wants healing, I pray boldly because Jesus has done it before and I know that he can do it again. But there might be times that we pray and we don't see people healed. And that can be really tough. And I was told when I was younger that when we pray for things, God gives three responses. He says yes, he says no, or he says wait. And sometimes the no and the wait can be really hard. It can be really confusing, especially when we pray for healing. But God is still faithful, he is still kind, and he is still good. And his promises are still true. His presence is still with us and he is still faithful. But because it, it's not what we do at the end of the day, but what God does through us that makes the difference. So in summary, what we've looked at in today's session, we are all empowered to pass the glow on and to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. His promise to us is his presence that he will never leave us or forsake us. And that when we come to pray for people, it is not what we do, but what God does through us that is important. So let me pray for us now, and then do have a look at the discussion questions to engage with afterwards. Come Holy Spirit and meet us now. Father, we think of those who are sick, who are in need of healing. Perhaps there's someone that you'd like to name now. Father, would you meet them? Would you pour out your healing presence? In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, do have a look at the discussion questions and I look forward to seeing you in the next session. <laughs>